Hello guys and welcome back to the Babylonians channel. Today we're going to talk about Kujira. So the price of Kujira has actually gone up by more than 300% from the lows of 40 cents to about $1.80 a few days ago uh, in just 30 days. So something is definitely happening over here and today we're going to talk about what is Kujira, what is it all about and uh, whether you should pay attention to this project or not. So to start off, I have already charted out uh, this uh, bird eye overview diagram of what the whole business model looks like. And at a high level overview, there's blue, fin, and oka. So a bit of background story, Kujira used to be running this uh, oka on anchor protocol in the Terra ecosystem, and they are doing very, very well. So this liquidation engine, uh, the TLDR is it allows users to bid on borrower's collateral at a discount when it is under collateralized. So this is typically done by whales who have the fastest bots, who have the uh, highest, deepest liquidity. So this is usually not accessible to uh, the retail and this unfair advantage usually goes to the whales. And now they're actually decentralizing the whole uh, liquidation process. So the users love it. There's a product market fit over here and at its peak there's 50,000 users and 150 uh, million TVL. So here is a snapshot of how their old uh, UI UX looks like on uh, Terra. So basically a bidder comes here, place a bid on how much discount you want to buy uh, the collateral in the event of liquidation. And you can actually see that uh, it has been performing uh, very well. There's a market fit for here. I think from March 2021 to May 2022, there's about 1.5 billion uh, that has been liquidated uh, through OKA protocol. So Kujira used to be a very promising uh, up and rising uh, dApp on the Terra ecosystem and there's a lot of people already paying attention but of course when Anchor and Terra collapsed, Kujira was also brought down along with it. So what they did is actually they pivoted and rebounded very quickly. They just uh, moved over, migrated to the Cosmos SDK and they spin out their own blockchain. So actually this might be a blessing in disguise for Kujira because right now they are actually doing more things and they have more features uh, than before. So what is new on Kujira is this uh, blue and fin. So blue is just your uh, administrative and operation stuff like staking, dashboard, governance, uh, bridging. So you can see over here, this is the dashboard. You can see how much Kuji is being staked and also the total supply as well as the vesting schedule. And then they are also uh, building their own wallet and you have like swap and IBC uh, bridging available also. And you can also stake your uh, Kujira here. So this is what Kujira Blue is all about, is usually uh, all these uh, governance and administrative stuff. Then next is Fin. So Fin is actually a central limit order book on-chain DEX. And this is very interesting because all along it has been very difficult to create this kind of uh, order book style on-chain due to uh, all these gas fees. And that's why people actually come out with all these uh, AMM models, liquidity incentives, and then it didn't really work and they moved to liquidity as a service and also it didn't really uh, took off. And here they are, they just launched uh, this uh, central limit order book and it works so far. So you can see this is the Fin platform over here. It pretty much looks like a, a centralized exchange like KuCoin Binance. You have your order book here and you can place your uh, limit buy or market order and it has been working quite well so they launched on July and you can see that volume has been uh, increasing uh, steadily over the past few days and if you look at the 24 hour volume it's already doing about 1.5 million in just uh, less than 30 days of uh, running this uh, Kujira Fin. So Kujira Fin is a product that is actually built from scratch. The whole code base is written uh, from ground up and they are not a fork code. So this really shows the ability of the team to execute, uh, to ship and to build a product market fit. And just like uh, Oka, it also found a product market fit people are using and it works. And also Fin is going to launch their margin trading very soon. So this is a very powerful effect. Because you can see uh, what the release of PERT futures in March did to Synthetic. So this is uh, Synthetic Protocol. They launched their PERT futures uh, around March over here. And you can see trading volume suddenly spiking over here. And actually PERT futures make up more than half of the fees generated from their mainnet. And the unique traders is also rising. So this is for Synthetics. And I think we will expect the same kind of uh, results uh, from Fin if they launch uh, margin trading because right now the Cosmos ecosystem is lacking a DeFi DGEN place where people can uh, do leverage and do trading and all these kind of things. So Kujira could potentially offer uh, that demand in the Cosmos ecosystem. So margin trading is coming soon and all these are uh, orange font is actually upcoming features that is not ready yet. So this is coming in a few weeks time, margin trading and USK stablecoin. And this is actually the main highlight of uh, Kujira, the, their USK stablecoin. 
So the USK stablecoin announcement was uh, released on 8 August and you can see uh, price immediately skyrocketed after they announced uh, this uh, stablecoin initiative. So right now many people might be thinking is this another uh, stablecoin like UST? So USK is not UST, it's not an algorithmic stablecoin, it is just uh, over collateralized by first atom and then uh, follow on will be Kuji. This mechanism works exactly the same way as how MakerDAO uh, collateralized DAI and the only difference is DAI is actually partially backed by USDC but USK is actually fully uh, backed 100% by uh, volatile assets in crypto. So they have set a 60% uh, LTV, so if your loan to value ratio goes up by more than 60%, then it will be liquidated. And guess who is the one doing uh, all this uh, liquidation of under collateralized uh, USK stablecoin? It is definitely their own OKA. Uh, so they have already created a own market for themselves, and this is their core area of competency. So this actually gives them an uh, advantage. So this is a uh, very interesting uh, to see whether USK stablecoin would work and this is like a double-edged sword. So if a stablecoin works, it will generate a lot of alpha returns for the whole ecosystem. But many have tried to do stablecoin and there are a lot of uh, issues. So uh, we will see. But the problem right now that I see is whether there's demand for USK stablecoin. Because right now the only way to mean USK stablecoin is you have to collateralize your atom assets. And so your returns from USK must be more than the opportunity cost of staking Atom and Kuji. And right now, if you look at the use of Atom, it's around 18%. So by collateralizing your Atom on uh, Kujira platform to mean USK stablecoin, you are essentially foregoing your use uh, of staking Atom and getting diluted. And that's why return from USK must be more than the opportunity cost for it to make uh, economic sense to mean uh, USK stablecoin. So a few possible use cases that I can think of is uh, definitely trading on their fin platform use using USK stablecoin and also uh, bidding an OKA or maybe there are some kind of uh, stable U vaults uh, by, by Black Whale or by their uh, own uh, platform or maybe they will give Kuji incentives but I think this is a short term uh, strategy which I think uh, they wouldn't uh, launch because their whole uh, thesis is about generating a long term organic uh, revenue demand and five is uh, maybe some DeFi farming lending uh, so it's really hard to actually beat the use of uh, Atom and this is uh, something that I'll be interested to see. But if Atom actually launch uh, liquid staking, then I think there will be a lot of uh, demand for USK stablecoin because even if they put their Atom here, they are not giving out their use and you can actually generate uh, extra returns from USK. So by minting USK, you also actually have to pay a 5% uh, borrowing fees. So this 0.5% uh, mean fee uh, borrow API and 60% LTV will be subjected to uh, governance changes. So now let's talk about the Kuji token and why is everybody so excited about uh, Kujira and staking Kuji tokens? Because you are actually getting revenue from a lot of uh, different sources. So right now the APR is around uh, 2%. By staking your Kujira token, you are actually getting 2% uh, APR. And this 2.18% is actually real use. And this is a very trending narrative right now. Uh, there's no incentive, there's no game theory, there's no Ponzi. It's all pure organic revenue. And there's 0% inflation uh, coming out from their supply. So right now this 2% actually mainly comes from Fin. Uh, the trading fees, the maker fees and the taker fees. So maker fees is when you place a limit order on their platform, then you'll be charged 0.075%. Uh, and if your order gets filled, whether is it through limit order or market order, there will be a taker fee of 0.15% because you are taking away liquidity from the platform. So this is much uh, cheaper than most of the uh, sex exchange out there uh, that's charging around 0.3% on average. And all these fees actually goes back to people who stake uh, their Kuji token. So this is the primary uh, revenue driver right now. This is where the 2% is coming from. And I think the secondary revenue comes from the network fees, but I think this is quite uh, immaterial. And also on their Oka, there will be a 0.5% withdrawal fee. So example, if you are a bidder, you successfully uh, purchase some collateral at a discount and you want to withdraw out your assets, then you will be charged 0.5%. Uh, and if somebody gets liquidated when they are under collateralized, 
there will also be another 1% liquidation fees. So this again goes back all to people who stake Kujira. And Oka is not live yet. And Oka is their main uh, business in Terra ecosystem. And next is their USK stablecoin. So there will be a 0.5% mean fee for uh, creating USK stablecoin. And also a 5% uh, borrow APR. Again, all this goes back to people who stake uh, their Kuji token and this USK stablecoin and Oka, I think they are going to launch together in a few weeks time. So definitely there will be a revenue boost to the current 2% right now. And this 2% API is actually growing very, very fast. In just a few months ago, it's actually like 0.5%. Then it become 1%. Then it's 1.5%. And now uh, for the first time, it's 2%. So it's always growing organically. And next is integrator. So there are a lot of integrators coming to build on top of Kujira. And now that they have their own chain, this is an advantage to them. So local money and cardo is actually some kind of uh, fiat payment gateway uh, that bridges the real world and the crypto world. And local money has already uh, promised to give 10% of their protocol revenue uh, back to people who stake Kuji. And uh, next is Black Whale. So Black Whale is a decentralized uh, market maker, which is market making on Fin right now. And they also promise to give 50% uh, of their revenue back to people who stake uh, their Kuji token. And the upcoming one is also uh, Cow Finance. This is just some uh, DCA protocol. And also they launched their Kujira Accelerator. So I think we will expect a lot more integrators uh, coming on board. Uh, in the next few months to come. So all this revenue from integrators would also uh, contribute back uh, to Kuji stickers. And finally, I have done out some uh, calculations and some assumptions on what uh, revenue from Finn would look like uh, three months or six months later. So right now, their 24 hour volume from Finn is 1.5 million. So if we analyze this, it is around 500 million. And if you calculate the maker fees and taker fees based on their uh, analyzed volume, it should come out to be around 1.2 million. And right now, this is the amount of Kuji stake and the revenue per Kuji is actually around 3 cents. So based on the current market price, the APR is around uh, 2%. And if you extrapolate these uh, growth figures 3 months to 6 months later, uh, this is how the figures would look like. And if you look at the volume growth uh, for their Fin platform, the 7-day growth is around 180%. Then the 30-day growth is about 270%. So let's be very conservative and just uh, take uh, the month-to-month -month, uh, growth to be 50%. The 3 months later, 24-hour volume would be just the current volume times uh, 1 plus the growth rate to the power of uh, 3. And this is uh, 6 months later. Then this is just the analyzed uh, version of it. And you can see that the total revenue would be uh, 4 million and 14 million uh, six months later. This is just a very uh, conservative estimate. And if the price remained constant at 160, 160, the API use will be 22% six months later, which is uh, quite unlikely because I think people will expect use to be around 10%, 15% uh, to be a fair value. 22% is considered uh, quite a good deal. So next is uh, revenue from Oka and I've taken some reference from uh, Flipside Crypto. So the total liquidations in the entire period of uh, the Anchor Terra ecosystem is around 1.5 billion. So assuming we take a 1% uh, market share of this uh, Anchor, it's around uh, 15 million. So let's just be very conservative and put 5 million and 10 million. Uh, this would be the revenue, expected revenue uh, from Oka. And this is for USK. So USK, there will be a mean fee and borrow fee. So this is some reference uh, from the OG blue chip DeFi protocols. And let's just take a very conservative 1% of uh, compound TVL, it will be 30 million. So these are the expected uh, future revenue from uh, Oka and US USK based on these uh, very uh, conservative assumptions. And that's why you see this uh, blue one is actually the bonus revenue. So let's try a more uh, realistic assumption. So let's say uh, we assume growth for the next uh, few months to be 75% instead of 50%. Uh, and over here, uh, let's just put 2.5% and here also 2.5%. Uh, then the liquidations, uh, let's just put 30 million. And then the TVL from uh, USK, let's just put uh, 50 million to be conservative. Then you can see the revenue will be much higher, 35 million. And at the current price, the APL will be 56%. So it is very unlikely that price will stay at 160 if they are making a 35 uh, million revenue annualized. So then what should be the fair value? Let's say people think that 10% is the fair value. Uh, let's see how much price will go. So it should be around $8 if people think that 
uh, A11% APR is a fair price to pay. So this is based on a lot of uh, ballpark assumptions and I'll put this Excel sheet on the Notion page. You can refer to it and copy and adjust yourself uh, later. So finally, how do you buy this Kuji token? So on their Telegram, they have actually uh, laid out a step-by-step -step guide on how you can do so. Uh, personally, I use the uh, option one because uh, option three is very, very uh, high slippage. So even though you can buy uh, Kuji directly on Osmosis, but the slippage is very high. So the recommended way would be to trade directly on their uh, Fin app. This would reduce the slippage uh, significantly. So if you have some atom uh, on the Cosmos hub, just uh, bridge them over on their blue platform over here, IBC bridge. So select Cosmos hub, atom, and then destination network will be Kujira. So you just bridge uh, whatever amount of atom you have over here. And then after you're done, uh, come to the Fin platform over here and then you can place a, whether a limit order or market buy uh, directly for the Kuji token would be better than buying on the Osmosis itself. So just watch for the slippage, sometimes it might be uh, quite high. And then once you got your Kuji token, just come over to stake and uh, choose uh, which, which stickers you, you want to stake with. So personally, I stick with uh, Denku and Smart Stake because Smart Stake has been around in the Terra ecosystem, Cosmos ecosystem for a very long time. So I think they are a, a reputable uh, validator. And Denku creates a lot of uh, content around the Cosmos uh, Terra ecosystem also. And the interesting thing is you are receiving uh, the rewards in all kinds of uh, tokens rather than the Kuji itself. So because these are the fees that are earned uh, from the validator, so you get a diversified uh, basket of rewards also. So that's it for this video. I hope you gain a better understanding of the whole uh, Kujira ecosystem uh, in this flowchart over here. And if you want to see more of such uh, content, I would appreciate if you can give these videos a thumbs up, like, uh, share this video, uh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, over here. And this is a Notion page that I've created. So the Kujira Excel sheet will be uh, under this uh, personal Excel analysis. And if you want to uh, refer to this chart, you can also come over here to the personal sketch. So that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.